So here's the sitch on the ATL box score today. We talk about why we're all winners over here, except if you're a Atlanta United fan. Then we have Mike Brummagen coming on the show, as always, to talk about NBA, what happened in the league recently, what's going on in the NBA right now. This is the ATL Box Score Podcast with Alex Berger, Atlanta's newest sports podcast, and you're listening to Recapping the Weekend. With starting a new podcast, people ask me all the time, Alex, where do you record your show at? Do you do it at your house? No, I don't do it at my house um, because of just a lot of different logistical factors. The place that I do it at is actually a place called Spaces Midtown East. And Spaces is a co-working center where uh, I get my show recorded and I get other work done. Co-working has been one of these new phenomenons in the private business sector that has uh, popped up recently. And um, Spaces also has another brand called Regis, which is more of a professional brand. Spaces is more for creators like myself, but to tell you more about these special brands in the business world is Mr. Steve Choi. Thanks, Alex. I appreciate those kind words. Uh, we absolutely love having you and ATL Box Score as part of our uh, our space. It's always great when we see you doing your work. Um, but absolutely, Spaces and the Regis concept, we are both workplace providers um, here in the Atlanta area, but all around the world. We have over 250 Spaces locations worldwide, plus over 1,500 Regis locations. And what we're really here to do is just provide flexible options for any type of professional, whether you're an independent professional, a creative, or if you're a large or small business. Um, so we have several different types of options uh, from small to large and memberships, part-time, full-time. So definitely come on out and check us out. Um, go ahead and look at the link on uh, Alex's site and um, ask for Steve Choi. And if you ever come into one of our locations, let us know that Alex sent you or ATL box score, box score, and we'll go ahead and set you up with a free five-day test drive. Yeah, you can't beat that five-day test drive. In those five days, you will know if Spaces or Regis is the right brand for you, and um, Spaces is all over the place. Uh, they're a little bit more limited, but they're in the main areas of the city. Uh, the one we are is right in the heart of Midtown, near the Fox Theater. There's one at the Battery. There's going to be one opening up North Point Mall there. Um, and there's also a location in Colony Square. So they are all over the metro area. At just about any major business uh, building in the Atlanta area has a Regis in it. So um, just Google them. And, but, but Spaces and Regis... And Steve Choi, in particular, is your place to uh, do your business. that we just want to say welcome back welcome back welcome back to the work week and i guess since it's the work week you guys are tuning into atl box score to help uh, to help you let's help you get through your work week with talking about sports uh by the way this is atlanta's newest sports podcast so if you like what you heard so far be sure to hit that subscribe button wherever you find us because we're all over the place on iTunes, uh, Google Play, but enough plugging that right now. Uh, in case you're wondering, I am Alex Berger, and it just feels good. It feels good being back here in the studio. The sun is out. The only problem is it feels like January with that uh, wind, but you kind of you kind of like, thank God I don't live up in the north where it's... Um, under 12 inches of snow right now in a winter wonderland to say the least oh my gosh I don't uh, I don't want to even imagine I mean 
a dusting happens down here and uh, people just, uh, they, they just freak out. I, I can't even imagine up there what it's like driving in like 12 inches of, 12 inches of snow and that ice and ooh, my gosh. But on a positive note, we're all winners this weekend for the most part. And I'm gonna get I'm gonna get into that in a second, but um, I was complaining about the last podcast about that, and I'll, I'll explain more about that. But it is good to uh, be back, be podcasting, and um, and I'm glad that you guys are all uh, joining us because I mean it's crazy it's crazy to think though going into this that that Atlanta United is the only team that's playing right now that had that that had a loss yesterday. I'm not counting Brave Spring Training right now. We are recording this on a Monday. They are getting destroyed, I think, by uh, the Astros right now. I don't really count Spring Training games uh, because I feel like it's kind of just it's just fun, and they 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 don't yeah, it doesn't really matter. And let me check just real quick. Yep, they are getting destroyed by... Oh, they did get destroyed by the Astros. This is on a Monday that we're recording this. I know we're releasing this on a Tuesday. But still, on a Tuesday, you should have good weather. It's It's been a really blustery day, though, here. But Braves, unfortunately, lost to... Um, yeah, lost to... The Astros, two to five. So, not really a great break. Not really a great day for the Braves. But still, I mean, there's a lot to be optimistic for. It's amazing how winning just does that to your spirit, uplifts your spirit. That the sun is out, or at least for me, when the sun is shining, my teams are winning. It's a it's a good day overall. There's not there's not a lot you can totally complain about. So, well, thank you for uh, joining us right now, and uh, I'm gonna elaborate on what's going on with this this winning thing and uh, what I talked about in our last podcast. This is Atlanta's newest sports podcast, ATL Box Score with Alex Berger. In case you're wondering, I am Alex Berger. We, uh, like I said before, check us out. We are on iTunes, SoundCloud. No, we're not on SoundCloud. Uh, we we are on iTunes, Google Play, and uh, Stitcher when you're a podcast. Uh, you really don't need uh, SoundCloud. So if you're a SoundCloud fan, sorry, but we're an easy, we're an easy a- access type of place right now. We are on Podbeam too. So if you're a Podbeam fan, then hey, you're in the right place. Podbeam's pretty easy to look up and and find too. So uh, be sure to be sure to tell a friend, tell um yeah, tell us about about this show and um and especially too because we like talking about sports here and yeah. So so with that be sure to hit the subscribe button wherever you're listening to this podcast. If it's on Apple, Google Play, wherever. So uh, we would appreciate that. That would help us out very, very much. So I'm Alex Berger, by the way. And right now we're going to get into winning. Well, in our last podcast, I talked about how this is just an uninteresting, it's boring time of the year. Because you're kind of like, I just, I'm waiting for greener pasture right now. I'm waiting for the Braves to play their regular season. I'm, you kind of get antsy to, to see um, something, some sort of product, sports-wise, do well. Because I've noticed when you're not winning, you just don't have that much pride and what's going on in your state and your city elsewhere. So I complained, and a lot of things just, the Hawks aren't interesting. I mean, like I said, Georgia is like one year away, and it's kind of, 
it's kind of like you you think that with the dogs things are going to get better. Uh, talking about their men's basketball program, and then with Georgia Tech, it's it's kind of a mystery. The Hawks are probably on a five year plan right now, but with that being said, I have to say. How about them dogs on Saturday? I was so surprised that the dogs pulled it off. And yes, winning does. It kind of cures all thing in, in, in sports talk land. And especially with this podcast, I, I am feeling a lot different than I did last Monday where it was and also too it was dreary and and if you haven't noticed the weather does affect my my attitude so to speak um also winning does too winning and losing affects my attitude but the dogs it's like man yeah I get it that it's like Florida isn't the Florida of the past I get that because you you could throw shade, you could you could discount this win. Florida wasn't playing their A game, which they weren't. Um, that Florida made stupid mistakes and and let Georgia into it. Also, Georgia made some dumb mistakes, also too. But you can't beat Mister Claxton when he is hot on that three point line. He is hot, and I'm telling you guys. Claxton, Claxton's the real deal. You, you better uh, look out. I, I mean, I'm excited, like I said before. I'm excited to see how uh, he does with Anthony, Anthony Edwards. But I feel like, too, that this Georgia game, hopefully, cross your fingers, but could this be a preview to what next year's going to look like? Think about that for a second. Because these guys, they got they clicked from the beginning and that's what something Tom Green was emphasizing in his press conference. Which a lot of their games with the Mississippi schools they lost by a point. They had these close close games. But when they started strong, like they did against Georgia Tech back in December, and they did it again last night. I mean, they were on a nine-conference game losing streak that just got broken. Yeah, it, talking about that, that's just sad altogether, but... It shows some optimism. I don't really know what's going to happen in the SEC tournament. I Right now, I don't really care with Georgia. They beat their two rivals on the road. Whatever happens this year, which is cool just from a uh, Georgia basketball uh, program standpoint, that you've sold out Stegman Coliseum consistently – you um the only so so there's a lot of positives you have an energetic head coach who wants to win a national championship eventually at Georgia but knows knows the challenge knows knows that it's 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 a battle uphill but it's something this guy wants to embrace which honestly where Tom Crean's been in his career he could he could live down he could live the comfortable life down in Florida, but no, there's something about that he wants to coach. He wants to um he wants to make this program better. I love Tom Crean. I wanna say that right now. I love Tom Crean, his enthusiasm, his confidence in uh the Georgia program and the uh Georgia culture too. Which at the same time where he's sitting right now, he doesn't have a lot of pressure on him crazy uh, Kirby Smart has more pressure on him obviously because there's really no there's not a huge expectation for Georgia basketball as long as they don't suck which I think even though 
they did this year, I think they're still going to get a pass because it's a um, it's just a, been a year of transition. Transition from uh, Crean to Fox. So I think he's going to get a pass for this year. But hopefully, and I'm thinking very optimistic right now, you can give me a ton of reasons why Georgia is not going to be successful because of LSU, Kentucky, Tennessee, um, South Carolina, and uh, that they're that, that they're nowhere going to be near competing with them. I get that, but at the same time, there's room for improvement, and I think you saw that this weekend playing Florida. Because there's no way you're not you're not supposed to win in Gainesville if you're the Georgia Bulldogs, and somehow they pulled that off. I didn't know I'd be talking about this for this long, so I have to move on. But great win by the Dogs on Saturday in the swampy areas of Fla. So. With that being said, on the other side, yeah, I'm going to get into some Hawks, which the Hawks tonight play Miami, or me and my brother used to call my um, Miami Heat the Miami Cheat when LeBron was there. But the Hawks this weekend, they lost to the Bulls, doubles. They lost to the Bulls on... um, on Friday, and then they beat them on Saturday. So, hey, I'll take that for where the Atlanta Hawks are right now. I'll take that. So, then, surprisingly, out of the middle of nowhere, yes, it's BC. Yes, they don't have, they haven't had a good basketball program for forever but still tech got a win i part of me can't believe that i'm talking about georgia tech very optimistically when there is no optimism for this program right now they were terrible in they're terrible last year and they're still terrible but somehow well not somehow they beat Wake Forest which they should beat Wake Forest but still I'm still going to call it a positive because Georgia Tech won they haven't won in a while um they Miami beat them they but they got wins against Pitt Every good team in the ACC just went through Georgia Tech. And now they're going to close the season with um, North Carolina. Yeah, at North Carolina State. So, I would like to see Georgia Tech go out on high note with um, beating NC State. But still, you still won. I like... I like the blue jerseys they wore. I thought that was pretty cool. You should see the players' press conference for Georgia Tech. They're wearing these hats, and I'm just like, I don't know if this is cool or or just weird. That was my thoughts on it. It's kind of cool that you're repping your school like that, but those hats look weird at the same time. Look that up. Look that up on uh, Google or uh, Twitter. Um, Ab Stanley, who's on the show, put uh, that out there on uh, my social media. So, yeah, look that up. But congrats to Georgia Tech. A win's a win, uh, no matter who the opponent is, no matter how you got it. So, so a win's a win. That that still breeds positivity into this. And we come off the Georgia win, we go into the Tech win yesterday. And then 
I see that the Atlanta Legends got the first safety. They got the first points. Now they got the first safety of the AF. The A A F. Alliance of American Football League. The you're always you're always pretty skeptical that a lot of professional leagues don't work a lot of professional football leagues don't work out unless you're up in Canada. They just don't work out in this country. So but at the same time, it's pretty good football, I must say. And that you have a lot of NFL guys there and Atlanta I mean, I didn't know that Michael Vick walked out on the Atlanta Legends. Now, I don't really know about that story. I'm not really going to speculate. But they went to Arizona to Sun Devil Stadium for the Arizona Hot Shots. That's what they're called. Yes, that's what they're called. Uh, with Greg Neuheisel uh, is coaching, coaching Arizona, that team. And they came away with a W. Which... They were in control that whole game. And I'm telling you guys right now, Atlanta Legends, they have a really good defensive line that kept him in that game. They dominated the line of scrimmage. That's what Kirby says. If you want to win football games, you got to dominate the line of scrimmage. And that's exactly what they did. Denard Robinson, quarterback at Michigan, um, back when Brady Hoke was at Michigan, is, I didn't find this out till till last night, that's their, like, start, that's what, yeah, I think that's their starting running back for the Legends. Man, oh, man. So, it's cool that football's back. It doesn't seem like it's a huge following, but it's cool to see football on the NFL Network right now and it gives something it gives the NFL network something to talk about but I know I'm just kind of snowballing this Aaron Murray which I'm finally glad it's his time which I know he's a better quarterback than Matt Sims I don't know why they started Matt Sims but they just did I saw some flashbacks from his time in Athens because it's like the first time I saw him go in there, I'm just like, oh my gosh, like he like he got a pass batted down at the line of scrimmage. And I'm like, oh my gosh. It reminded me of when he was in Athens. Stuff like that happened where his balls would get batted down and you're just like, where was he throwing to? And then it's like he shows you why he's Aaron Murray. He throws that um, ball to the seam route. Uh, he throws that ball to the sidelines uh, where his receiver's going over uh, some, some sort of out route, catches it, legends back in the game. That it's like you, you go from getting your ball tipped at the line of scrimmage on a third down to the next drive, getting into another third down situation, and then going 30 yards down the field. That's the type of court. That's what you get with Aaron Murray, and and you love it. And when he's on fire, oh my gosh, you don't want to. If you're if you're going against Aaron Murray, when he's on fire, he's like Drew Brees. Just can't stop it. Can't stop. Won't stop. That was Dave Chappelle. I love Dave Chappelle. By the way, loved his sketch comedy. Um, so. It just, it just bringing that in today, seeing Atlanta Legends get their first win. Get their first win all the way out in Arizona. And, man, everyone there was, like, wearing, like, short sleeves. Wish I was wearing short sleeves today. <laughs> um, yeah, every, it, it looked like nice weather out there. We'll, we'll, um, 
real sunny and and um, look, it looked like the sun was coming down on Sun Devil Stadium, but but Atlanta United. I mean, uh, not uh, I said Atlanta United. Oh, I just, I'm thinking Atlanta United because I'm going to talk about them next. But the Atlanta Legends getting their first win. Man, that was a celebration last night. If you haven't seen it, you missed out. Denard Robinson really did his thing. Aaron Murray coming off the bench because of Matt Sims' injury. I really do feel like they need to they need to keep on giving starts to Aaron Murray because I think he's going to do really well in that league. I don't know if he'll get another chance to go back to the NFL, but I think he's going to do really well um, in that league. So... Now Atlanta United. Atlanta United, Joseph Martinez was was really off last night, and they lost to uh, D.C. United. This was the only loss of the weekend. I, if you want to count the, the Hawks game, sure, but I'm not going to count that. I'm not going to count that loss on Friday because I want to go into this week being positive. But Atlanta United, losing to D.C. United, I don't think this is a devastating loss. I don't think... This is just the beginning of the season. A lot more games ahead. I do think that they're one of the talented teams or the talented team in the MLS right now. Disappointing to see, yes, but at the same time, when Joseph Martinez... Martinez is off. The whole team is off. So that's going to be a, a little concerning uh, going into the season. But at the same time, they they beat Costa Rica on Thursday night. And I don't know if they had any stuff left in the tank to go ahead and, um, yeah, go ahead and just um, get the win against D.C. But, but – they were also playing in the rain, not not giving them excuses or anything like that. Things just weren't going their way. It was a nice weather, playing in the rain, in the mud, and Joseph Martinez just off his game, kind of just just threw everything off. And and I still think there are brighter days ahead. I would still like to see Pity Martinez reach his potential here, and hopefully we're going to see that. This Sunday is um, it's Atlanta United's first game in the bins, so I'm assuming that um, the Atlanta United Nation is going to show up and show out as usual. And uh, they got their new chant though. I heard on the radio just quickly. Um, so if you hey if you know if you know the chant to Atlanta United stuff, put that in the comment section because I don't know it. So, um, this is where you guys can help us out because we're just, we're just like fans, uh, like you. I just, I just like sports. I just like talking about sports and this is my medium to talk about sports. So put that in the comment section and we'd love to love to hear from you love to get your uh, opinions on that uh, again this is the ATL box core podcast with Alex Berger this is Atlanta's newest sports podcast and uh, be sure to um, check us out give us a like um, subscribe wherever you saw us uh, again we're on iTunes, Google Play, and uh, Stitcher. So if you're listening like on the Podbeam or you're listening on uh, YouTube right now, uh, there is an easier way to get this podcast if you feel like that's that's the easier way. Some people uh, like the, the YouTube um, avenue that we can give. So we, we have a lot of ways we can get this podcast out there and uh, to you guys. So with that being said, we're going to have Mike Brummagen on our NBA guy to uh, talk more about the NBA, what's going on in the league, but uh, that has been recapping the weekend, and thank God we're all winners today. Just thank God. Thank God the sun is shining, even though this is Atlanta's wet season right now. 
So just just a great, great, great Monday. Never thought I'd say that, but it is, guys. It's a great Monday. Or you guys are going to be listening to this on a Tuesday. What am I saying? Great beginning of the week. Uh, this is uh, this is the ATL Box Score Podcast, Atlanta's newest podcast, Atlanta's newest sports podcast. You're listening to our recapping the weekend show, and right now we're going to have Mike Brumgen come on the show. Well, we just want to welcome back Mr. Mike Brumgen from CNN Sports. I got it right this time. Um, to talk about the NBA, what's going on in the league, and uh, just talking hoops um, till the rest of till the end of the podcast. So, Mike, how are you doing today, man? No, I'm a little under the weather, man. Just been uh, trying to get over a cold. I feel you. I I know how that it always starts with me. It always starts with like the sore throat. That's how that's how I always know that I'm uh, about to get a cold. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, for me, it's always like coughing and sinuses draining in my throat. Yeah, yeah. Well, hope you get better. But um, with, I just want to get into um, the standings right now. Um, and what are your thoughts on how everything is lying? recently like a couple weeks after the uh nba all-star break and yeah what are your thoughts right now uh i think things are starting to kind of come into form um we kind of know who the major contenders are now um you know houston is coming alive in, in the western conference and they're looking like they're even though they're only the fifth seed right now they're looking like they're going to be the probably best threat to the golden state warriors in the west even though you got Denver and Oklahoma City like second and third nipping at their heels in the standings, um, Houston's played the best. They're three and zero against the Warriors this year. Uh, they played them tough last year. Probably should have won that series if Chris Paul didn't get hurt. So they're looking very formidable right now. They're healthy, um, so they look uh, they look serious. And uh, and then you know you got Milwaukee is the first team in the league to lock up a playoff spot. Uh, they actually did that in their win over the the Lakers the other night, and um, you know they they're clearing away the front runner in the East. Um, Toronto has a good shot. Um, Philadelphia not not really looking that great right now. Um, they still have the talent. They they just don't seem to play collectively well enough. And Boston, yikes! They uh, they seem to be free falling. Yeah. Uh, Boston. Boston's what uh, they've lost five of their last six games. And then, of course, if you want to talk about the Lakers, um, they they are since since LeBron came back from injury, they are looking bad. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. they've beaten one good team, and that was the Rockets, and they had to fight uphill to to win that one. And then you know lost to the Hawks. Lost to the Pelicans, lost to the Grizzlies. Uh, they fought real tough against the Bucks, but then gave up a 12-point lead and lost that game. And then they lost a horrible game to the Suns over the weekend. Do you feel um, like Do you feel like the 76ers could be a wild card in the East? It, it just depends on their play. Like right now, the way they're playing, it. Eh, well, we got caught. I'll just say caution, you know, like the way they've been playing of late, they haven't been looking too great. But, you know, there was a stretch of what, like, there's been like four or more games uh, with Joel and B, their best player, sitting out with knee injury. So, you know, um, we'll see what, what they look like. There's still like 19 games left in the season. So we'll see what they look like once, you know, they get back in the groove with their full squad. But, um, it's just like they they haven't found a, a really good mix of chemistry. They don't know when to – it's like they try to take turns. Okay, well, it's it's Jimmy Butler's turn to try to take over. It's, you know, here, give the ball to, you know, to Simmons. Let Simmons try to drop to the basket, you know. But Simmons can't shoot jump shots. So late in the game, he's not an option. You know, and then you got 
late in the game, you, you're looking at Butler, Harris, and Embiid when he's in there. You know, like, okay, who's going to actually take the ball and be the leader? But they don't right. have a clear set leader. The leader should be the point guard, which would be Simmons, but Simmons can't shoot jump shots and isn't a great free throw shooter. So you're reluctant to have the ball in his hands because he could just get fouled and put on the line and miss shots and and you're squandering the lead as the other team's playing well on the other other end of the floor. So it's they still need to figure out how to you know, the, I guess the hierarchy is the way to say it. You know, you know, who is the boss? Who's the top guy who's going to take control of this team when it counts? And um, it seems like they're still trying to figure out that, that team identity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they have the talent, though. I mean, like, their top five guys are, are phenomenal talents. So I mean, if, if they pull everything, the, the one thing is they, they don't have as much depth. Um, they kind of trade away some of that depth, so that that can make them a little thin when it, you get into really tough battles in the playoffs. But their t- their starting five is going to be a monster if they can pull it together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they always seem like that. I mean, because where they're sitting right now, it seems like they could possibly be a team that could. Um, be up there with the Bucks, uh, but at the same time, like there, there are a lot of question marks there. Well, they, I don't know if they want to be where they are right now because if they don't move up to the third spot, which it's it's crazy when you think about it that the Indiana is still, and this is a testament of how both Philadelphia and Boston have not played that great since the All Star break. Because just before the All Star break, Victor Olo did. Oladipo suffered a, a season-ending injury. He was the best player for the Pacers. And since that point, they have remained the third seed, and neither Philadelphia or Boston has now overtaken them. That's, that just shows you how not great. I don't want to say badly because, you know, they have spurts where they look great. But across the, the broad spectrum from, from then to now, like, you just got to look at the total package and be like, yeah, neither one of these teams has really shown themselves to be that good. Um, and that's why they, they haven't overtaken a Oladipolis Indiana Pacers for the third seed. And that's where they would want to be because if you're the fourth seed, if you're Philadelphia and you're the fourth seed, once the playoffs start, that means you're going to be playing Milwaukee in the second round. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Although third third seed might not be that much better because that means you're playing Toronto. Either way, you're gonna have a tough matchup, um, and you're not gonna have home court in the second round. So yeah, I really don't see any any way that they make it past the second round in the playoffs this year. It, I just can't see them beating either Toronto or Milwaukee. Interesting. Now, speaking of like that second tier teams, right now uh, in the East. You have the Raptors right next to the Bucks, and you have the Nuggets right next to um, Golden State. And you talked about that um, the Nuggets have the best chance to kind of give Golden State a run for their money right now. But I don't really want to focus on that. You did mention about um, the Celtics. I said Rockets. Oh, the Rockets. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, you did say about the um, – you did talk about the Celtics and the Lakers both just spiraling out of control because they were supposed to be those uh, second teams that could possibly get into the Western and Eastern Conference Finals, but right now they're just they're just sputtering out of control. Yeah, Boston. Clearly, there's there's like issues with Kyrie Irving and his ability to play with the young guys on that team, Jalen Brown, J- uh, Jason Tatum. You know, it's, it, not that those guys aren't good players; they're they're great players. They proved that last year when they made it to the conference finals without him. Um, but when you when you look at, you know, what, he had a stretch. He had like a stretch of like. Maybe five or six games yeah, where he was playing. Yeah. Kyrie was playing as a part of the team, and he was like getting a lot of assists, and he mm-hmm. was keeping the ball moving. 
um, and it looked great. And that was before the All-Star break. And then since then, you know, there's been a lot of questions about his, 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 you know, dedication to Boston. You know, is he going to leave as a free agent and stuff? And like, not sure, but maybe that stuff has, you know, gotten under his skin and has caused him to like question things. And, and then, you know, there's been grumblings about players in the locker room questioning his leadership, um, questioning the style of play because, you know, they were able to be so competitive last year without him. Um, you know, and, and you guys keep in mind that these other guys, some of these guys are playing for the next contract. Some of these guys, you know, like Jalen Brown, he's, he's on a rookie deal. He's looking to get some big money, you know, but if Kyrie's hogging the ball, and pounding it out, dribbling, dribbling out most of the clock. Well, Jalen Brown's not getting to show his stuff and try to improve his his value to potential suitors to mm-hmm. get more money. Mm-hmm. Um, Jason Tatum isn't at the end of his rookie deal yet, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't want to be the star because he proved he was capable of being the star player last year when both both Kyrie and Gordon Hayward were out. So. It's just a little bit of dysfunction, and I want to put a good portion of the blame, I think, should go to Kyrie because, you know, he's got to learn how to put himself aside and do what's best for the team, which is right, right. be, like, what would be best would be to be the point guard, not to be the the hero dribbling out the clock and taking all the shots. He needs to, just like that, that short stretch he had before the All-Star break, needs to go back to trying to keep the ball moving, keeping everyone else involved, and that's going to get their spirits up, get the team morale up. You know, that would be on-court leadership. That would be him think... taking a step back to get everybody else moving forward. But um, I don't know if he's capable of that um, for a prolonged period of time. And then the other person who's really you got to point to is, is the coach. You know, last year when both of his top guys were injured, and the team was doing so well, everybody was lauding him and saying, oh, you know, Brad Stevens is the next Greg Popovich. He's the next great thing. And not to poo-poo on him, you know, like, <laughs> I'm not trying to say he's not a good coach, but one thing that the greatest coaches do that we're not seeing in this situation, and I'm not sure if it's because of his lack of experience or lack of ability in handling this kind of situation or if it's just because Kyrie's un, an unwilling participant but the greats usually if you look at championship teams like you know Phil Jackson with both the Bulls and the Lakers you look at Greg Popovich you look at you know any of the teams that have had a ton of superstars and been competing at a high level their coaches were good at managing the egos, mm-hmm. good at getting yeah. people to put put their egos aside and yeah. work for yeah. the best interest of the team. And it doesn't really look like, you know, whether or not he's trying, I don't know. We're not in the locker room. We can't see that. But it doesn't look like whatever he's doing is being successful in that regard. <laughs> Do you feel yeah. like, though, with Kyrie, because this is the first time Kyrie's been in this situation where he has to be – the leader in in a sense because when he was at Cleveland you had LeBron and I just want to know do you, do, is he not used to taking on this type of role and this type of responsibility because usually it seems like with players like that they're they're not used to that thing and all they know to do is to just to blame it on other people. Um. All right. So let's look at take a take a step back and look at his his career. You gotta, you gotta think. When he was in high school, he was what? He was probably the best player on his team, right? He didn't have other people stepping on his shoes, you know, trying to take the shine from him. He was the guy. You, you go to college, you know, and in college, he was the best player on his team. You know, that's why he wound up getting drafted, you know, number one overall, best player on the team. Then, then you come to uh, the pros. His first three years in the pros, he was in Cleveland by himself, you know, with just ragtag group group of, you know, veterans around him. He was the guy in in a sense because he was the best player until LeBron came back. But he was, you know, he's still in that young phase of his career. Nobody expected him to be a leader. That's why mm-hmm. they had veterans mm-hmm. on the team. 
so the veterans could step up and give leadership. Um, so at every phase, he's either been the guy and had no, no, no questions, you know, issues, you know, like nobody questioning what he's trying to do on the court. Or he's been the guy, but, you know, he's on a team that's not competing and the veterans are just trying to help him grow. And, you know, this, so there's never been a situation where he's had to lead others or had to play alongside other people who were as good but not better than him. Because then when LeBron came back, he clearly was not the best player and he wasn't the leader either. Um, and now you put him in Boston and he's the guy again. He's the best player on the team, yeah, unquestionably. Yeah. But what changed the, the dynamic last year when, when he went out with that injury and they continued to compete without him as a team, <clears throat> those young players, Brown, Tatum, all those guys, they, they Terry Rozier, they stepped up and they showed themselves to be fully capable of competing at a high level um, Tatum even playing at an all-star type level, you know, without him. And so now when he's back, you know, it's, it's there's like a a com- competition for, for, you know, I, I want to say the other guys are trying to be the guy per se. Um, but it's, it's like they, they know that they're capable of more than what they're relegated to with him on the court. Gotcha. And so it's, it's, it's a conflict of ego. And and that's where it just goes back to what I just said earlier. You know, like the coach has to kind of take control of things and get people to put their egos aside and commit to the team, commit to playing together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They, they they got you know they got another month and a half left to to try to pull it together and and do that before the playoffs start. So. We'll see if they can turn it around, but you know, um, it's not looking great. Right, it's, right. Right now, it's definitely not looking great. The, the the plus side for them is that the East is weak enough at the bottom end that they're not at risk of falling out of the playoffs. Whereas the Lakers, once LeBron got injured, they fell from the fourth seed down to like the tenth because the West from top to bottom, with the exception of like one team at the bottom is deep, you know, like full of teams who are competitive. You just, you can't fall off like that and expect to still be in the playoff line. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Now, speaking of the Lakers, um, they're out of the Anthony Davis sweepstakes. Um, So Um, where do you think Anthony Davis is going to go from here? And, why are the Anthony Lakers Davis, out of it? Uh, well, they're not out of the sweepstakes for Anthony Davis. He's under contract with the Pelicans for a whole nother year. So he's got to get traded in the offseason. Trade deadline's over. Um, so that's that's a moot point until we get to the offseason. Right. And trade talks can go on. And the Pelicans are going to try to negotiate with everybody out there who might be interested and try to get the best deal they can for themselves. Um, recent news uh, the Lakers pulled out of the running for getting Carmelo Anthony uh, They there was talks after uh, he had been released from the Rockets that he could wind up signing with the Lakers and, and playing out the rest of the season with LA but given their current circumstances them looking like they may miss the playoffs it, it's just not looking to either party like it would be worth the, the commitment worth bringing on a 34 year old veteran to play maybe, you know, 18 games have to go through a whole reacclimation process as a team to maybe not even make the playoffs. That just doesn't seem like a, a good fit. So they've put a, a, a stop on negotiating to try to sign him to the team. <laughs> now I just want to, in this conversation talking about um, the Hawks playing the Bulls because they split the series. They played one game here, which they lost, and then they traveled up to Chicago and uh, won there. And the ironic thing was Trey Young, I mean, he I think he only played eight minutes. Is that correct? Or, uh, cause... No, um, 
So in the first game, the first game went to four overtimes. Trey Young played a, a ridiculous, like nearly fifty-six minutes, mm-hmm. like fifty-five minutes and some seconds. Um, ridiculous game. Four overtimes. Trey Young had a phenomenal stat line. He had forty-nine points, sixteen assists. Uh, actually, makes him only the second NBA player in history to have 40-plus points and, and 16 assists, the other being J- James Harden, who I believe did that earlier this season. Wow. Um, so that puts him in rare, rare category, you know, as, and he's just a rookie. But then, then the, the next game, you know, they did a, a home-and-home. Home. So the, the first game was here in Atlanta, and then the next game was in Chicago. The next game was just the other night or last night. And um, – Trey Young got ejected just 18 minutes into the game. Got a, like, well, 18 minutes for him into the game. I mean, he'd only played 18 minutes at that point. He shot a three, made the three, and then was staring down his defender as he backed up, and they called him for a technical and ejected him from the game, which is, like, pretty pretty sad because yeah. I, I remember growing up in the 90s and – you had guys like Reggie Miller making choke signs at people in the playoffs on national television and not getting ejected. Yeah. <laughs> you had players like Michael Jordan and Gary Payton saying the dirtiest things back and forth to each other as trash talk throughout the game and not getting technical fouls or getting ejected. And now, you know, like, I, and maybe this all is just, it's just like the, progressive trend of the league becoming a little bit more softer ever since the the malice of the palace Um, (laughs) ever since that fight happened they keep trying to up the rules and and make it more difficult for people to taunt or to to talk or or, you know anything that could possibly lead to a fight they're trying to avoid confrontation as much as possible because they don't want fights they don't want stuff that could spill over into the stands and have another catastrophe so maybe that's you know, that could be where all this originated from is this, you know, progressive trend of the rules changing to kind of steer people away from that kind of stuff. But, like, the the little taunt that he did was really, really benign. It was, like, he made the shot, and he put his hands on his hip and kind of posed like Peter Man, uh, Peter, Peter Man, uh, Peter Pan. He posed like yeah. Peter Pan, you know, just the iconic Peter Pan pose with his hands on the hip and just stared at the guy, and they called him for a tag. Like, that's weak. But you know what can you do? Right. But the kid is playing great. Um, he's actually just this, this weekend by itself. He's played his way back into the rookie there conversation. Um, for most of the year, it's been like a foregone conclusion that Luka Doncic was runaway candidate to win it. But uh, after that four overtime game, everybody's just like, "Hey, hey, hold the brakes now. Maybe Trey Young could be the rookie of the year winner." So I, I think it's still Luka's award to lose. Because he's not playing bad, right? But uh, but Trey is definitely turning heads. So it's right, real real positive note for Atlanta fan. Yeah, it is. That would probably be the best thing that would happen to the Atlanta Hawks this year, if it happens. <clears throat> I mean, even even if he doesn't win it, just the fact that he'll probably finish second on the ballot, you know, shows that you know he he's not. You know, a lot of a lot of us who criticize a trade at the at the draft, you know, it's still it it it's still technically a bad trade until we see what they get from the draft pick that they get from Dallas next year. Um, so we'll have to well next year being this summer, uh, so we'll have to wait and see what happens with that draft pick. And but if they come away with a decent player, a player who lasts in the league and you know at least is a a a formidable role player if not better with that pick they get from dallas then you know it's it'll be hard to say that they actually lost that trade you know yeah yeah. but uh, but at least you know the very least he's playing well enough now that you can't look at it and say that you know they they blew it you know like there's so many years past where they've done stuff like, oh, we could have drafted Chris Paul, but we took Marvin Williams. You know, like, those were obvious situations where the Hawks just blew it. 
Right. But yeah, they did. Trey Trey is playing well enough that you know you 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 just you can't say that they blew it. Um. If nothing else, you know, long term, I still would have rather had the taller guy. Uh-huh. I, I I think height is a big deal in the NBA, so I still would, would prefer to have had Luca because he's six seven and you know Doncic is like five inches shorter. But you know, the kid can ball. Right, right. Well, thank you, Mike, for coming on. Um, a plus on your analyst skills. So um, where can we reach you out on social media? Uh, at M. Brummagen on Twitter. Well, thanks, Mike, for coming on. <clears throat> no problem, man. Two things before we get you out of here. One, don't forget Wednesday is when we do our Atlanta Braves players no oh, excuse me Atlanta Braves profiles players and players so we're getting into a pitcher on Wednesday so check back Wednesday Thursday that show will be up and uh, out there also too I do advertising for a place called Spaces Midtown, which is a co-working place, which uh, is a cool industry into itself. It's interesting, especially if you're an entrepreneur or you're um, you're trying to find your niche, like like I am, and you need a place to um, do your thing, be creative, whatnot. Well, I'm actually uh, starting a um, a blog about. Um, about co-working and also trying to do a couple of video series on just um, internet inf- influencers and uh, podcasting and videography. Um, but the blog is probably going to come out sooner than that. So stay tuned for that. I just wanted to let you guys know and share what's going on uh, with me. Um, still going to talk about sports and everything like that. But um, eventually when the... Um, College basketball is over. The baseball is kind of uh, doing his th- its thing. I'm probably going to take a month off and uh, focus on uh, doing that stuff. Get back with you after that month. But uh, just to let you know about that. But the, the, those are other creative ways that um, yeah that we're we're doing and we're trying to um, trying to give this business legs and stuff. So that's that's another way we can. Uh, do that. So I'll let you know about the blog if you're interested, more interested in, in co-working and um, like I love, I love working on the spaces midtown. I love um, the fact that you can uh, that you have this amazing setup here. Um, but I've also been involved in other co-working co-working spaces uh, that are cool, and it's kind of your preference, but. Um, but I'll explain more about that and um, if you're interested in the blog and you're interested in checking out that stuff and you want to see how um, how you choose uh, what's right for your business. So um, I'll put that in the description when it's out and I'll, let, I'll keep on updating you guys. So with that, I just want to thank Mike Rongen for being on the show. No Steve today. He's a little... A little busy, so um, but but Steve, I know he's listening and um, appreciate you listening, buddy. Also, yeah. So um, with that, um, just again, want to give a call to action. We, uh, like I said, we're on iTunes, and Google Play. So if you could hit that like button, if you could put, if you could write something awesome in the comment section, definitely would appreciate it. That would help us a lot and. Um, and hopefully, the reason why we, we give you this platform is uh, because I, w- I wanted to get into sports talk radio. And this is my way of doing it. And so we want to try to be um, as funny and as cool as a, as a sports talk radio show, even though they have tons of resources and stuff. But uh, we're trying to trying to get there and everything like that. So... Um, trying to uh, be one of the um, one of the 
really good sports podcast that you can listen to, especially here in the Atlanta area. That's our main target audience right now. So, so thank you guys for uh, checking us out. Thank you for uh, listening uh, to us today and just give us a like, give us a holler in the comment section and um, hit that subscribe button. That would help us out the most. That would help us out uh, drive our audience up. So thank you guys. Hope you get, uh, hope this helps you through Atlanta traffic. I know how frustrating and, and boring and, and, and mundane that is, but, uh, hopefully we gave you, we gave you a good, uh, good combo to, to chew on and to, to, to talk about and to, to like, especially if you're an NBA fan. So with that being said, Episode 36 is...